The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here. Steve Rhodes is out, and I said I will do this hour because there are so many questions that I had. Uh, also, for about five sessions now, um, I've been wanting to do this. This is Investors Business Daily. This is a list of top, the top 50 stocks. And it's really important going through this because it tells us about what's working and what's not working. And it's, there's a real mixed market because within the context of failure patterns, there are some things that have held extre extremely well. So let's just do this. And the first question I want you to get to that I didn't finish up before was uh, the GDX. <clears throat> So this is the market vectors gold miners. If you look at this monthly chart, you see the way it's making from 45.78, the high of August of 2020. It's just making lower highs and lower lows. And if that's the case, then this is the pattern right now where you have to see a change. Um, and the monthly chart, of course, we've only just begun the month of April. <clears throat> but that monthly chart, the nine has flipped to negative. But anything can happen intramonth, right? So I'm just telling you where we are right now. Um, the MACD is just about to cross negative, And the stochastics weak at 56%. The unbalanced volume, the blue line, is very weak. In the weekly chart, making lower, lo lower highs and lower lows, it went to a G slash C alternate count. It is a G with a down arrow. But we've used up the down arrow from when that went under the 14 period moving average. So I use the other symbol that I use, which is the inverted. It's like the pyramid right there. It's a little hat. And that, once you used up the, uh, the down arrow, especially if it goes to an F and then a G, we had the same pattern back in the week of October of 2007, where in the summer, it made a peak, I can't remember, I think it was a peak E high, and then it pulled back, and in the Chapman Wave methodology, you can go to a G, never an H, but it went to two higher peaks and then failed that October high, and that's where the monthly chart of the S&P went to a Chapman Wave Roman candle, which gave us the clue that this could be really serious. So in this particular instance, it did that. It's I call it the camel hump. You know how some camels have two humps? You actually don't know is that... Am I allowed to say that? Um, you don't know what you're allowed to say these days. Um, anyway, and I usually call it, it's, a, it's an M-shaped pattern. So you've got some camels that have the two hump, and this is the one that says if the stochastic goes over 80% very briefly and then comes down sharply, watch out. And that's exactly where we are. We're in the watch out phase. There's the dreaded H. I was just talking about that in my show uh, moments ago. I wonder if I can find it. There it is. So the dreaded H is when it comes down sharply, sharply, makes an H pattern, fails at a peak A or a B, and then takes out the left side low, and it can go quite a bit lower. Then it did it again there. It went to an A and failed. Then it went to an A and failed. Then it went to another A and failed. Now it went to an A and a B. It's just going to be a larger arch formation, the dreaded H going straight down and then arching over and fading at an A or a B. You got the same thing here in the in the weekly chart. Um, this is going to be very important because gold is kind of the go-to place internationally. If the XLF, well, I haven't talked about the XLF for days. If the XLF, which is the S and P Financial Select uh, Spider Fund, if it starts to fail, then usually countries, not just institutions, but big countries, say, "Oh." Failure in the, in, the, in the financial sector in the United States, I'm going into gold. But that's not really the case yet. This is not really a failure. It's not looking great, but it's not failing. It's above the 200 period moving average, the XLF. And the question came in, what about Bank of America? Well, Bank of America is a stock that we've owned 
at least six times in the last seven years or so, and then we try to ride, ride it as high as we can and then get out and then wait and wait and then get it again. This year, for the last eight months or so, I don't think we've even been in it because it's just acting so poorly. I would like to think that this is going to be a go-to place because it has the financial, the, the broker-dealer uh, part of it, which is the Merrill side of it. But this chart is not a great-looking chart. So I'm saying to, can't remember where the question was, I wasn't in the YouTube. Uh, I'll do Apple, I'll do that. I can't remember where it was. But B Bank of America, BAC, hold off for now. Just have patience. You'll get it. And I think it will have a decent rally this year, but not just yet. Okay. So now within the context of what we're looking at is the GDX, the gold miners. Look, Newmont Mining, dreaded H pattern at a peak B. Oh, it actually went to a C. Peak C. And now it's pulling back. It hasn't made the H pattern yet. It is arching over. But I can't put in a C minus because it's still in place. Uh, let's go to JP Morgan. It had a fantastic move. JP Morgan it has a great move if I can get to type in the right place. JP Morgan. Here we go. JPM. Yeah, look at that. Coming back sharply after that alternate count G slash D, uh, C. That's a G, and I can put a down arrow right there. That arched over. It didn't make a. Chapman wave stalk leg formation, and it's only a peak C. I, I should call this an alternate count. I'm sorry, I have to call that a, an alternate count. So this is right here a G slash C in the weekly chart. Just updating. Remember, you can go back and correct in the Chapman wave methodology. You're not cheating or anything like that. You're correcting. If you don't correct, that's cheating. That's cheating yourself. You've got to update as much as you can the notation. That's your only obligation, right? So uh, J.P. Morgan saw one of the best-looking banks, but it is a little bit uh, uh, <coughs> rusty right now. Okay, so now what I want you to do is Apple. So the uh, questions came in, could I look at different stocks? So yes, Apple. So Apple has a sharp move down today. That week, they had a beautiful up channel. There's a chap wave technique. I call it the price symmetry. We can go from the left side high or the left side low, and it rallies or it declines. And then you find a midpoint. I call it the plumb line. And then you should have the equal. Now, if you identify this correctly, you can get an equal number of bars to the right side to get back to that left side high of 176.15. And lo and behold, it did it almost to the week, to the exact bar and the exact price. And then it broke out in April. <clears throat> Was that May? And then it goes all the way to that peak D. And within three bars, it makes an E with a doji candle high, pulls back. So I'm suggesting to you, Apple Monthly looks fabulous. The weekly chart looks toppy on the shorter term, but the 9 is still over the 14, so there's still internal strength. The, week, the daily chart... Try to fill the gap. It almost filled the gap from uh, the beginning, end of July, beginning of August. And now it's having a sharp pullback. And this is telling me <clears throat> that I was talking about over the weekend when I, was, when I did my video, my one hour long or just under an hour vi uh, video for my subscribers looking at the overview of what happened and what's going to happen, the expectant, expectant uh, parameters for the coming week. And I said, some things are acting extremely well. Well, Apple was acting well. Now it's not acting well. So this rotation into weakness now is very pertinent. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapter sitting in for the hour of Steve Rhodes. I'll be right back. Dow's down 222. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. On a very short term, one minute basis. And the question came in: Can Nike hit 98.75? Uh, it's at 99.10. And look at all the support levels right there. These are Chapman Wave automated support levels. It broke the 99.13. Next one was 99.05, and so far the low is 99.03. And you've got 99.01 next. We'll see. Can this turn around? Can the E Mini, at this particular point, use this? Uh, support level uh, of 44.63. It went just under it to 44.60. Can it break 44.66.05 resistance? I think so. I think it's trying for a little bit of a bounce, but it needs to get to 44.68 to 44.72. And I'd say if I was looking at the five-minute chart, you would have to do that. We're at 11.19 a.m. on the 6th of September, and it should do that by 11... 11.35. Actually, it should do it before, but I'm saying 11.35 would be a measured move. All right, let's get back to our story. So I, I was looking at the GDX, and I was just saying a lot has to happen with the GDX. And I said, let's go on to Apple. So we've looked at Apple. Apple is in a consolidation phase, having tried to fill the gap. That gap is like a magnet. It went there, and now it's being repelled from it. But my suspicion is that at 183.88, the 185 to 186 level is going to be really important in the next two days because if it can get there and hold, it means it's trying to establish a higher base of support in the 171 area it was at just uh, uh, two weeks ago. But if it actually in the, today's Wednesday, if by Thursday at two o'clock, after two o'clock, it breaks 180 support, that's a real issue. Looking at Amazon. Amazon, Amazon right now, look at that weekly chart. It looks fabulous. Look at the monthly chart. Very good. Daily chart says, oh, chop, chop, chop. It's in a sideways range between 141. It's trading at 135.88 right now. But 133 is really key support in the short term. If it takes that out, 
um, that's going to be a big problem. So that's Amazon, just a digestive phase. And I wanted to do these. Uh, where did they go? Don't tell me. Oh, right there. Okay. Click. So let's do the CLH. CELH. This is in Investors Business Daily. This is the top 50 they've got. Look at this. And you, this is what I was saying that there's really a, a bifurcated market, but it's tri or quadruplicated because even in different, look, Coca Cola. Look at this chart of Coca Cola. Did fabulously. And then it just made that peak D in the weekly chart. And now it's failing from. The 64s is down at 58 right now. But wait a minute. CELH, Celsius, holding, ink, drink, supplements. I don't know if I've ever seen one of these things. Leg C in the monthly, leg E in the weekly, and everything here is just looking fantastic. And it extended this leg E in the daily chart. It doesn't even know that the market is pulling back. It is in its own world. Nice chart. Elf. Remember I said when Ulta lost its beauty, that Elf had taken its place. Well, Elf had a new rally to an all-time high after the 137.48 high that was made in August the 2nd with the 132 round number low. It did plummet, filled the whole gap. It went down to 115. Now it's trading at 135. It seems to want to ignore. Remember, beauty products, they're the last ones to give up anything, right? Um, until something really bad happens with earnings or whatever. But in this particular case, Elf Beauty Inc. Cosmetics, near all-time highs. Uh, D-L-O, D-L-O. Hope I've still got the chart notated. Yes, this is Dow Cal Limited Payment in Asia, Africa, Latin America. Um, had a huge gap. It didn't fill the gap. It's staying in the middle of the range, 21.4. So I want you to point out to you, the reason why I wanted to go to this is to say, hey, don't get, don't get overly pessimistic. There are things that are working. I, I anticipated that one of our stocks would have a, a bit of a breather today, so we took almost a 30% gain, a uh, little position off. <clears throat> as we're just whittling a tiny bit, a tiny bit to, to do money management because it should have a bit of a, a bit of a rest. Another one that we got into, um, I never know whether we're going to succeed with this one because when we got in in the 21s and it ran up to the 60s, that was fantastic. But trying to get back in to put some of that money back to work, not so easy, but it's in an area that says to me, even intraday, you can have a huge 5 or 8% rally up and down. So I, I prefer to be going into those just for the moment. Question came up, if I would look at, uh, did I look at that? Yeah. If I would do the uh, SOXS. This is the SOXS is the, uh, where did it go? Did I type it in the wrong place? I must have. Yeah, I typed it into the den by mistake. SOXS. This is three times short the semiconductors. The reason why I haven't gone back into it, this would be the perfect time, but the SMH has made a leg C, and it's in a buy mode. It should have one little pop to a D. It might take us out of our short position, which we've been in for quite some time. <clears throat> but um, I'm looking at internal strength in the semiconductors just at this particular moment. So I, the risk, I think, is just a little bit too much for me to say if we got it at the low of the day of 9.06, if we got it at 9.15, here is at 9.46. It's not a big deal. It's already been up to 11.84 in the last month. But I, I see bursts of energy coming in to fool everyone in this particular move that we're looking at. This is a rotational correction that we're in. So I, I'm sorry. I would like to say, yeah, grab the SOXS. It's going to fly I just, I don't, I'm not, risk reward, I can't do that. Uh, Basil calling out the balance, you just can't mess with the den. We don't miss. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, okay, so let me just go to show you what I'm talking about. SMH, look at this. A sharp move down today, down 2.24 at 154.34. Our stop is just, I don't know how it's held, but our, we've got a split stop. Um, we've taken nice nice gains on 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 the core position. Got still got got some left. But now what we're looking at is it went to leg C. 
The nine is over the 14. The MACD is not great, but it's good. Stochastic is fabulous at 90%. On balance volume is okay. Relative strength, a little gray line right there, starting to decline. So I, I, I sorry, uh, three times, it's just too risky because the other people that are listening, they might want to grab it. I know that in your case, you'd be very diligent and judicious about how you get in and what you do. But I'm just saying, we might have missed an entry point but I'm just, I'm going to let it go. I'm sorry. So the next question is, um, oh, the VIX index? Yeah, look at this. VIX.X. The VIX index did this pyramid, straight up, straight down pattern, almost like an Eiffel Tower, and now it's trying to rally. But if you look at the weekly chart, it's an inside bar from last week. It's not really spiraling. It's only a 56 cents. And if you look at the horizontal line that I drew in from years ago in the VIX index, this gray line has always been a nice bounce off level for the VIX to rally in the market to come down. And that's where we are. But if you look at the MACD, that's really weak. And if you look at the stochastic at 5%, so it's going to have to be a huge move in the VIX index, the, the, the fear gauge, to really get the market to tank. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Steve Rhodes' hour, and we're looking at uh, the, the uh, E-Mini's down 35. 
uh, it went to a peak. Do you remember the Chapman wave? We're always looking for a buy signal to be upgraded to a buy mode to go to at least a D. And I drew in this uh, cup formation with the bar symmetry, the plumb line, the middle. And it says that by 11.37, as long as the 9 is holding above the 14, we should try to get to 44.79. Oops, sorry, 44. Is that right? Yeah, 44.70.50. I'm not sure it's going to be able to do that, but that's what we've got here. And we'll see if that works. But you've already got to that peak D, which is uh, the objective of a buy mode. And what happens in the stochastic, look, when it suddenly plunges under 80%, you've got to be careful because that's where you can drag the price down. As long as it's holding above 80%, especially 85%, that's good. But that 9 is still uh, positive. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a tough row because there is – whereas yesterday, every pullback still buying until the very end uh, where there was just a tremendous amount of selling this morning. Uh, buy signals have gone just very briefly. You can see by the single leg A or a B to the upside in the one-minute chart, and then it fails and takes out the left side low and goes much, much lower. Uh, meantime, back at the ranch, uh, here we go. So uh, we were looking at – a uh, question came in. Ah, I did that, I did that, I did that. Oh, yes. So, NVIDIA. So, NVIDIA, here's the daily chart of NVIDIA. Sharp move down, down 15 at 469. And what we were looking at yesterday, what I was saying is that the technicals are all very good. But the way that this candle on the earnings went to 502.66, closed down, then followed up with two lousy candles, it says to me that we could be trapped, initially trapped in this rectangle formation between 502 and let's call it 440. For the moment, we'll call it 440. Is that two or four? Right there. Uh, I've got 440. Eight. Oh yes, four forty-eight. So it's sort of trapped in this in this nether netherland. Uh, and, but look at this: the weekly chart has got the falling axe formation. It read almost a one-to-one -one to the upside. Now it can come back and retest that. The MACD is starting to fail. The stochastic is starting to fail. Unbalance volume is overbought. So the only technical tool I use is an overbought, oversold condition. Look at that beautiful turnaround right there in the daily chart. So the weekly chart is, says the price is still way above the 9 period moving average. The 9 is way above the 14 at four at 428.35. <clears throat> the N NVIDIA, and that means we're going to use up time, if this is the case, for NVIDIA to go negative in the 914 period moving average, uh, you would probably have to see 360. Uh, it's a 369 um, right now. <sighs> I wouldn't be uh, sorry. Four, is it four sixty nine? You'd probably have to see a couple of closes on the weekly chart under three seventy six. That's almost one hundred ninety points. So that's the reason why I'm saying you can't just take things for granted. That oh, semiconductors are, have had it. No. Um, so that's that one. Next question was rig. Could I look at rig? Uh, so rig is not rigor mortis. It's done very nicely. Transocean offshore drilling. But now it's getting a kind of toppy. And this toppiness says, if you're long, just purely on money management, I would take a little bit off right now. It could go higher. But this is where it's 809. If crude oil even pulls back a little bit, this could quickly slide. Uh, under 780 or 760, and then it could go even deeper down. But the, only a little bit for money manager because the, the weekly charts at this point still looks very good. Uh, what was SLB? I usually do these together, Slumberjay. Slumberjay is a different kettle of fish. This did a beautiful V-shaped formation. It's at an – is this an all, this can't be an all-time high, but it's definitely a multi-year high. Yeah, I remember this. So this went – Look, from that low that was made back in March of 2009, when peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and then almost the same double, double this double hump pattern, 
it screams up to a high in February of 2020, uh, for the week, no, on, yeah, the February of 2011, and then it double tops and comes back down. Then it goes peak A, underneath it, A, B, C, D, E, F, goes to peak F right there, July, uh, this is July of 2014, and then it comes down. Then if you use this as your fulcrum, left side to the right side, all you have to do is go from there to there and then click and go from there to there. And look what happened. It took a little while longer and then it took it right out. Now what's important, actually I normally would go to the trough of that. That would take me pretty much to the end. But now look at this. So the all-time high was right there on the th uh, th in July of 2014 at 118.74. So we are way under it. And this has gone, look how it's walking the nine-period exponential moving average, getting a little toppy based on the, uh, the M-shaped pattern in the MACD and the M-shaped pattern in the stochastic. But the green nine-period moving average is still good. This is a much better one. Uh, so did you want to, oh, for an entry, <clears throat> this is very difficult in the sense that you're at a high, but stocks that make highs tend to remain on the new high list for quite a while. So I'm going to suggest you don't have this. I don't think you've got it. It's not a re-entry. It might be a re-entry for you. Uh, so I'm going to say this is just for you with the question that you asked me. And I'm going to say where would you enter? And I'm going to say small position at 60.76 right now. And I'd have to give it a three-point, just initially a three-point stop because this, you see this bar cannot be, the low bar cannot be the high. So that's not an A. This is leg A. So it's F because you have to continue the count from there because you never took out the starting point. So that's F slash A. F says, oh, my God, be careful. A says, are you kidding? I want to buy every single dip. So I'm going to say nibble right here at 16.75 with a chance that if crude oil takes a little bit of a pullback and this holds, even with uh, even pulling back a dollar and a half to two points and then makes a new recovery high, I think it can go higher. It's a different chart altogether, slumberge, uh, oil and gas, I believe, uh, So and in the service, uh, servicing of that area. So now let's go back to our charts because what we wanted to do is um, – so I need to just click on this and go back to the chat, Tiger Chat. Yeah. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, I'm going to call this F slash A. No. Yes. F slash A, just for the moment. F says, Gee, be careful. F A says, are you kidding? I want to buy everything. And when you get this kind of divergence, just be cautious. Just say, hey, it's acting very well. I want to be there if it starts to move a little bit higher. I don't think it's going to go much higher, but a little bit higher. I'll be back. Dow's down 190. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, 
you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So we're looking at ACLS. This is part of Investors Business Daily IBD stock list. Uh, trading at um, ACLS is trading at 190.25. Excellus Technologies, Inc., U.S. company, cap equipment for semi-industrial fabs, um, iron optimizer for performance, uh, blah, blah, blah. Peak C in the monthly chart. Peak C in the, in the weekly chart. Technicals. Are weakening but the nine is still strongly over the 14. The daily chart is in a buy mode um, and we're looking at it at 190.26 down 2.32. Is there going to be enough strength over the next few days that even if it pulls back it goes to the C and D? It could still fail but technically I have to call this a buy mode because all, all everything that I look at uh, meets the criteria to call it a buy mode meaning it should go to a C and then a D. So this is acting very well, monthly as a weekly chart, as I said, acting very well. Um, FTAI, I don't know if I remember doing the FTAI. Uh, yes, this is FTAI Aviation. Uh, just look, this looks like General Electric. Just walking the nine period moving average in the weekly chart. Uh, this is an E and an F that we've got right there in the daily. It's very close to some kind of a, a little bit of a digestive phase. And uh, rate IOT is trading at 30, FTAI is trading at 36.94 down 40 cents. And um, I'm calling this an F for now with a two doji candle it says just starting to stall a little bit. And G slash C <laughs> in the weekly. So this is still very strong. FTAI aviation is this not the electric electric. Uh, airplane is this anyway? Whatever it is, FDAI Aviation doing fabulously. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Workday, WDAY. This is trading very. You see, this is what I'm saying. I can show you charts. You look at these charts. You wouldn't know what the the market's doing. You say, oh, this is fabulous, right? All time high uh, with in pennies of sorry, new recovery, multi year high. All time high was 307 back in. November of 2021 plummets down to the 120s. Trading right now, double that, 248. Looking really nice. So that's why I'm saying I wanted to show these charts. I actually wanted to show them the other day to say, hey, these things are doing very nice. And look at ANET. This is the I did this yesterday. I said, oh, this is holding so nicely. Arista Networks almost at an all time high within pennies of an all time high. So don't be fooled by the market. Be very specific. Know what you like. Stay with what you like. 
put in tie stops. Don't be afraid to take a little money off. And if you're trading like a very near term, uh, as I would be doing, except right now I'm doing the show. Um, look, this is walking the nine period moving average in the one minute chart. Could it fail? Yeah, of course it could fail here. But it did go to a peak D. It's stalling at this D right now, the one minute chart. And look at all this is the one minute with the automated Chapman wave resistance levels. Look at those resistance levels. And look, the five minute chart is still pink. It's just, it, it has, it'll have to, you'll have to see 473 in the E mini for this pink nine period moving average to go positive or get close to positive in the five minute chart. So it's a work in progress. So a couple of questions have come in. Let me just see here. Uh, yes. So in the context of, right here, I, I want to get out of this. In the context of that chart that I was showing you a little while ago, the aviation one, look, he has GE. Didn't they look the same? Look at this. Look, walking. The, it's not walking. It's actually running above the the four the green nine period moving average, which is way above the 14, which GE weekly chart has only touched once. And that was back in December, the week of the 23rd, 2022 at 60.24. Here it is at 113. It's already double, almost double that. So now it's stalling out. It's got this rectangle formation and rectangle formations, the longer they last, the greater the chances are they're going to take out the left, the the base of support in the rectangle, especially when it's a narrow one like this. So GE is in a digestive phase after a fantastic move uh, just uh, from from December, you know, uh, 60s up into the 113 area now. So digesting gains. Same kind of chart pattern as that aviation one. Uh, another question came in. Could I look at where did it go? And uh, now. Okay, I, I'm sure I've updated it. Any chart that I look at, I do a quick analysis. Yeah, there it is. Now is service now. Cloud auto, automated management workflows, IT service, made a peak G slash C way back in July, about 100, uh, 610, 611. Pulls back to 530. Now it goes peak A, peak B if there's no new high today. Uh, let me just double check. I believe that was a penny or two. So that's 3, 396, 46, 396, 62, yes. So this is A, right there, A, and that's B. We're looking at service now. Look at this beautiful, oh, that's also what I want you to do. I'll do that. I've got time. I want you to show you these larger contexts of um, chart formations. Yeah, it's all very well looking at it in a very short term, and you look at it, uh, just. Uh, but I like to look at the big picture. Look at this plumb line that was made back in October of last year. Look how it's worked so judiciously to get back to the left side high of that ugly candle around about uh, December of, of 2021. And I chose this series of high here, highs here to go to, and it went to the, to the tick, to the week exactly, plumb line, midpoint, right there. And what did it do? Service now goes to this doji candle high. This is a weekly chart, the week of the 21st of July at 614.36. Makes a, another cup formation. Remember the in the pattern we were looking at, the dreaded H, you got the green reverse, uh, reverse Y, very positive, and it's making that Y pattern right now. So it's going to try to tackle that. It's at 596. So I want to emphasize... Not everything is going down. Stuff that maybe you look at often, yes, but stuff that maybe doesn't come up. Service now, it's doing well. Five ninety six twenty eight. N O W is is the uh, symbol. Uh, the, okay, now a question came in. Could I look at Microsoft? Microsoft. Microsoft has gone to a leg B in the daily chart in this price time match. Uh, coming off a low in the 310 area, going to peak A, then at a horrible gap up candle. I think that was news related. Pulls back, but then finds its way back up again. I like when it goes to a B over the previous high in this big rectangle formation or deep rectangle formation. And that just says it's in play. But the weekly chart says, you know, it might be in play. But Microsoft's technicals on the weekly basis after that uh, doji candle 
uh, back in July. Um, this is not very good action. Yes, it's gray A, and then a, we're in a gray B line, but that's that's not movement. That's just that's terrible. More like indigestion. Um, and I just think that Microsoft needs more time. So as I look at it now, the question was, where would I enter Microsoft? I say, hold off, give it two weeks. And if you can get it closer to 312 or 310, give me a yell. We'll look at it together. Meantime, Dow's down 200 and 200 and something. 201, s and down 37. I'll be right. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This last segment about NAT, which is Nordic American Tanker Shipping. So I'm going to draw this in right here, and I'm going to say I'm doing this more by eye than time, and I'm going to suggest to you that, let me just get to this right here, that this could pull back a little longer and get to the 200-period exponential moving average by the 14th of September, Straining at 3.86 right now. And if I'm correct, the Chap Wave inside wedge target support line right there says that watch how it handles 3.75 uh, 3 because if it takes that out, it's going to go quickly to the 364 200 period exponential moving average. That's on the very short term basis. And then, real quickly, as we're about to wrap up, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. We've had some really nice uh, 
positions there. Look at this rectangle formation. So this is the large rectangle. Maybe tomorrow I'll have a chance to do it. <clears throat> that says it's making the H pattern, very large H pattern. If this takes out 4464, 4, this is the E-mini at 4465.25. For two out of three set bars, the one-minute bar, there's a real good chance 4463 is next. And at any point today, 4463 is taken out. 4458 is going to be really important support to hold. Upside just keeps getting beaten down every time it rallies. But it has to hold about 4470 to 4472 in the 10-minute bar for at least two bars, and then it can go a little higher. So with that, I think we're just about to wrap up. Am I am I early? Oh, how about that for a change? I'm a little early. I'm a little early for the change. And oh, another question came in. The XLE. The XLE is the S and P Select Spider ETF, and that is trading right now uh, down 17 cents at 91.05. Uh, yeah, this is that breakout that we don't know. This is the alternate count. Same thing. The alternate count. Look at this. Uh, e slash B. E says, be a little careful. B says, are you kidding? I want to buy everything. But the technicals are still strong. So it tells me that the energy select spider fund still has some strength. Let's see. Did we, did we break down there or not? Uh, we went under it and we back up. All right, folks. Have a great rest of the day. Great program. Yeah, yeah. Check out both the call my day. You said I'll see you again tomorrow.